Shut up and sit down. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I am the Cyber Reef Guru, and I wanted to make a quick follow-up video. Um, if you're not tracking my other videos about the uh, printer uh, parts that I'm making here, uh, what you see in front of you is actually uh, one of the parts that I've been making, and I've been having some issues with this pin here. Uh, breaking off because the way that we're printing it, um, printing it from the bottom to the top um, and the spiral printing here is causing some uh, lack of uh, stability here in this joint. So I've tried putting some fillets in, increasing the print density, none of it's really working. So what I've decided to do is just simply uh, create the part with a hole rather than a peg and then use a wooden uh, dowel here uh, that is the same dowel that actually goes in these holes here. So. Uh, I'm in Fusion here and I just want to show real quick how to do that. Uh, it's super simple. Um, first thing off the bat, we want to make sure that our part is activated, uh, which isolates all the rest of the, uh, they're actually called components in Fusion, isolates all the rest of the components. So when we make changes here, it only affects this component. I've already set the view to show hidden edges um, here, just so we can see a little bit where the edges are. The hidden edges are the dashed lines as opposed to the visual edges, uh, visible edges here, which are solid lines. So um, first thing we want to do here is make sure that we have our timeline advanced to the end. And then I want to uh, just point out here, I have a, a component coloring turned on. Uh, so the different colors here you can see, kind of orange, blue, and pink. Uh, so the component we're talking about is pink, and you can see orange, green, blue, green, orange, pink, whatever. So uh, the area that we want to focus in on here for that pin is really these components here. You can see we made that chamfer, uh, we made those fillets, uh, made the fillet around the base that I just talked about, and then the chamfer around the edge and the actual extrusion of the pin. Um, so I'm going to roll the uh, history window back to here. Uh, it just makes it easier, gets the rest of the stuff out of the way. Uh, don't really care so much about this chamfer, we're not going to focus on that um, or even this fillet. So uh, we can actually roll the print head uh, or the timeline head here. So this fillet here, no longer necessary. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and delete it. Uh, the chamfer, also no longer necessary. We're going to go ahead and delete it. Uh, now this peg here, so instead of having a peg, we want to have a hole that cuts into uh, the part. So in this case, uh, rather than deleting it and then extruding the hole again uh, as, a, as a cut, we're going to edit the feature. And you can see here it puts us into the edit mode and you can see we pulled the circle that's on the uh, sketch here out uh, 12.7 millimeters it looks like, which is a uh, half an inch. Uh, so what we want to do is rather than pulling out a half an inch, uh, we want to pull it in. Um, so we're going to go to this view here and pull it in. And what you're going to see here uh, is you can see how pulling it in is cutting into those holes that exist there. Um, now, what that means is, is these rods are pushed up into these holes. Uh, it's going to hit the rod that's pushed into the hole here. Uh, that's okay, uh, as long as you uh, can live with the consequences. One of two things here. Uh, quite simply, you put the rods in the bottom and then the pin in first no worries if you put the pin in first and then the rods up the rods just won't go up as far as they would normally uh, uh, for this particular application no big deal it doesn't really matter uh, so we're just going to go ahead and run with it uh, in this case instead of doing a join though we want to do a cut you can see here now it moved from the, the kind of blue shaded outline they got to the pink um, and that tells you you're doing a cut and if you go to the front face here whoopsie the front face uh, it shows you exactly where you're extruding to. 16 millimeters is fine for this purpose. You click OK, and now you have the hole. It's that simple. Uh, Fusion is really amazing in that regard. Uh, one other thing we want to do real quick is we just want to uh, select this edge, and we want to add a chamfer uh, just to make the insertion of the pegs a little bit easier. I'm going to do a one millimeter chamfer on it, which is what I've done on all the rest of them. It's worked out well. Um, so now you can roll the print head forward to the end of the timeline. Um, in this case, we've got to kind of scroll the timeline one more click. And there you go, we're back to uh, quote unquote present time, but instead of having a peg, we have a hole. Uh, so the parametric editing here and the timeline or versioning capabilities of Fusion are really amazing. It allows you to do some quick editing here. So we're going to put it back into uh, uh, vis uh, visible edges only, uh, and then you can see 
how the hole now cuts into uh, these vertical pegs that go up to center. But again, uh, that's fine for my purpose, no worries here. Um, and because we rolled the timeline back uh, to this point in time, when we mirrored everything here, uh, you will see very quickly, let me scroll out, we have another top part over here. No peg. Um, we have a hole. Uh, so there's no need to make the changes to these parts um, because you made a, uh, what we did is uh, the way we designed this uh, entire drawing here is that the, uh, we did all the work on this side and then we mirrored it um, across the center plane here. So uh, we didn't have to double the amount of work we had to do. It's amazing. Super duper easy. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I hope you liked the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, as always, if you don't like it, thumbs up anyway and uh, have a great evening. Thanks.